Blake's. Like, hey, Scoob, did you hear Nikki Blake is hosting a Scooby-Doo panel? No. Yeah. Like on today's Scooby-Doo episode, Scooby-Doo and Shaggy meet Nikki Blake. Yeah, in a Scooby panel. <laughs> like, we need to get this puppy started. Yeah, okay. Nikki Blake, take it away, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> Welcome to the Scooby panel. I'm your host, Nikki Blake from ScoobyAddicts.com, and today we are talking about real crimes that mention Scooby-Doo. Before we begin, I will have everyone introduce themselves, and Wendy, we'll start with you. Hi, guys. I'm Wendy Bridge. I'm a commission artist, and I've been collecting Scooby for over 30 years. And Joel? Hey there. I'm Joel from the YouTube channel Planet Scooby. I can't get it right, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> nice. I am going to put that as a visual in the panel so everybody can see Wendy's awesome artwork that she made for Joel for oh, Planet you. Scooby because it's amazing. Thank you. I can't believe I didn't notice it until it just went <laughs> big on my screen. I was like, oh my gosh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> the masks. You were looking at the it masks. It was the mask. I was, I was all about uh, like that <laughs> witch. I'm all about the witch, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, but. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking about real life crimes and in those crimes, something Scooby-Doo related was part of the crime. So I am going to read my synopsis of the crimes and then we're going to discuss them. The first one is probably the tamest one on the list. Grinch and Scooby-Doo stolen from Hamburg, New York Yard. So two handmade Christmas decorations, a Grinch and Scooby-Doo, were stolen from a yard. The family spent hours working on them. They made a lot of their Christmas decorations and they made them by hand. Each decoration took the wife anywhere between 20 to 30 hours to paint. And she said that with her arthritis getting worse, it was getting harder to do, do that kind of work. So the Grinch and Scooby were her final projects. They were very upset that they were stolen, of course, and called the police, but the police said it would be very difficult to solve the theft unless someone came forward with clues. So the family offered a reward of $200 for the return of their Christmas decorations, but I don't believe that they ever got them back. Uh, this happened December 6th, 2013. Yeah, that's, this one really bothered me because I know how much work goes into making things like decorations and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I live in a place where there's really no point in my decorating outside for anything because I don't have any neighbors. I live like a quarter of a mile off the road. Even when you get out to the road, like my closest neighbor is still like half a mile up the road, but so you think when you live in like a community, like what's the point of putting decorations outside? Well, it's so that everyone can enjoy what you enjoy. And to think that, to think that some jerk would come along and like, I mean, I hope that they took it because they really loved it. Like that doesn't make it okay. But like, I hope that it, it went someplace where they're at least loving it and enjoying it because that was a really rotten thing to do. And I feel really bad for the lady. Um, don't steal people's stuff, guys. Like, please. That's just, you know, especially something that's like you can tell is homemade. Like, that's just like the lowest of the low. You know, all the time and the effort that goes into those things. Like, it's a lot. If you've never done it, I guess maybe you don't understand. But trust me. It's a crap ton of work and you only do that kind of work if it's something that you really, really love. So uh, that's really disappointing that they probably didn't get them back, you know, but, uh, but yeah, that one, that one kind of hurt a little bit because I can well imagine that feeling that, that she would have had. And like, that's just not, that one was really awful. Yeah. <laughs> um, that one is really <laughs> awful. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure there's like some sentimental value behind it too, which makes it even worse. And uh, I don't know, it could have ruined their 
I hope it didn't, but I hope it didn't ruin their like sense of Christmas forever after that. Probably would for me. I probably would never put anything out again, but I hope for their sake it didn't. And yeah, awful. Tamest, but probably the one that bothered me the most. I don't think I would put anything out after somebody stole it my stuff either especially for it to be handmade like i don't put any of my scooby-doo airblown things out in the yard because Mm -hmm. i do worry that somebody's going to take it so yeah but yeah i would be pretty mad if somebody took something that i handmade Mm -hmm. the next one happened april 29th 2014 two south carolina men accused of selling pot near school from a scooby-doo lunchbox There were two men that were charged with possession of marijuana with the intent to distribute and possession of marijuana near a school. Police said the men had nearly five ounces of marijuana, 10 unused glass pipes, and three glass pipes with hash residue inside a plastic orange Scooby-Doo lunchbox. Officers found the men within 50 feet of the Northside Elementary School in Rock Hill, South Carolina. The lunchbox was tossed in the woods near the men, but both men denied that it was theirs. I guess we should just be glad they didn't use the metal orange lunchbox. Right. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, not the $300 one. (laughs) (laughs) This one really made me mad because I feel like if you are doing that that close to a school and you are using a Scooby-Doo lunchbox, I feel like that is proof of intent to like entice children to do something that they shouldn't be doing. Like bad enough when adults are doing that, but you know what I mean? Like the, it's not just the proximity to the school, it's what they put it in. And I just feel like that is a deliberate thing. And the thought that like I will get more into this with one of the future stories but the thought of people taking something wholesome and pure like Scooby and attaching it to this kind of stuff makes me furious it makes me want to hurt people because that in and of itself is wrong it's it's the most egregious thing that I can think of apart from the actual crime is that you would you would sully something that is meant to be good and meant to be for children and you just put your filth all over it like that making it into drugs or what whatever you know it, it's gross it's gross and that really made me mad and i doubt that they even went to jail i doubt that anything really substantial got done and I, I personally feel like we need to bring back the idea that drugs are bad. Drugs are bad, period. I don't care what government is like, oh, we're going to legalize this and this is going to be fine and we're going to do this recreationally and everybody's just going to be so happy and blah, blah, blah. Mm-mm-mm. No, absolutely not. No matter how many people do it, doesn't make it right. And trying to involve, like, even if you weren't thinking about it, like, involving something like Scooby with your distribution, like, stop it. Absolutely stop it. Not cool. Not cool. Yeah, I agree with Wendy. Um, I used to get really furious about it, like, seeing Scooby associated with drugs and stuff. And I guess in my old age, I've mellowed out because I would be dead by a stroke if I Mm. kept getting furious about it. And like when you look on when we did we did that um, panel about the weird stuff with Scooby, like when I looked on Etsy, fifty percent of it was like drug paraphernalia with Scooby on it, and there's just that association, and I'm just tired of it. And growing up, I knew people did a lot of drugs, always laughed about or mentioned drugs with when you talked about Scooby, and I just you know I kind of got them out of my friendship base. And I think they all remain potheads because nothing really became of their lives. They're just, they're just not living good lives. They're not doing it. They're still not doing anything with their lives because they went down that drug hole of drugs and stuff. So you kind of get what you kind of, I don't know. It's just something that I've just kind of put aside and focus on the, 
the pure hearted goodness of Scooby-Doo, I guess I'm trying to say. Because, yeah, it just really used to piss me off. If that makes any sense. This one pisses me off because I have kids. And if somebody was trying to use Scooby-Doo to sell anything to my kids, I'd be so mad. Yeah. So mad. It's yeah. not cool. You can't, like, entice kids with something like Scooby-Doo or some cartoon character that they like and get them to do something that is harmful to them. Right. I'd like to think most kids know better, though, right? Well, we hope so. I would but... hope so, but... I mean, they were eating Tide Pods just a couple of years ago. Like, yeah. gone. And setting them on the fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah, gone are the days of those wonderful... And I'm sure they had American equivalents, but Joel will remember all of those crazy PSAs, uh, anti-drug commercials that we used to get in Canada in the 90s and in the 80s. And they pulled no punches. They pulled no punches. They were like, this is how it is. They, they were terrifying, but they worked. I never, I have never been enticed to try drugs ever. And part of it is remembering those, those amazing PSAs that, by the way, YouTube has deemed inappropriate for people under 18 and has age restricted them. And I'm just like, this is what's wrong with the world. They were made for children, and now you're saying that they're too graphic and they're too much for kids. Mm -mm. We had after-school specials, and there was that commercial with, this is your brain, this is your brain on drugs, and it was like the eggs, and yeah, mm -hmm. I'll never forget that. Yeah, yeah, time to bring that back. I feel like today's kids really need a good dose of that, <laughs> and today's adults, to be honest. Our next article is from October 24th, 2015. Drunk man arrested for mooning adults children at downtown park. In Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, police were called to Plyler Park due to a disturbance that a man was drunk at the park. The suspect was located and officers said, said he smelled strongly of alcohol and was drinking a beer. As officers tried to arrest the suspect, they said multiple people told them that he had jumped on a Scooby-Doo van in the middle of the park, pulled down his pants, and exposed his rear end in front of adults and children. He was charged with public intoxication and sexual exposure. So the first article I read, I was really confused. I was like, what kind of mystery machine? They didn't explain it in the article. And I was like, was it a toy? Like, how did and how did he stand on a toy mystery machine? Uh, but another article that I found said that it was a full size mystery machine that was on display in the park as part of Myrtle Beach's Boardwalk Fright Nights festivities. So it was an actual full size working mystery machine that he climbed on top of so he he could moon everyone that was in the park. Yeah, I feel like that was probably. I'm going to assume that it wasn't the fact that it was a mystery machine that made him do it. It was just like the highest point that was accessible. But again, I really feel like this, again, I don't want to get ahead of myself because I have a big rant planned for later. Just everybody FYI um, that has to do with, with intoxication. But I feel like no matter what anybody says, I understand that things like drugs and alcohol impair your judgment and stuff like that. But I also feel like we are letting people off the hook way too easily because I still feel like you're not going to do anything drunk that is not like in you to do. Maybe when you're sober, your brain stops you from doing it. But I think that it has to be in your heart in order to do that when you're drunk. And so I do think that there was some level of even subconscious intoxicated understanding of the fact, like clearly this van is here for people, but primarily children to enjoy. Let's just make like, again, let's just smear my crap all over it. I don't know. I really just feel like there there needs to be more of a more of like a pushback against people 
that are like doing bad things to things that are meant for children. I feel like it shows a level of perversion that we're just overlooking that we're just like, Oh, well, it's the same thing. Like the guys with the lunchbox, like, no, I feel like there needs to be like an added charge when you are deliberately like using something that targets kids. Even if you didn't mean to, I still feel like there should be like an extra slap for that, you know? And like what, even when I was a kid, I didn't think mooning was all that funny. I certainly didn't want to do it to anybody, you know? So like, what, like really, like, what is your life that you get drunk and like, that's what you decide to go and do? Like, I'm just going to go to the park and there's a bunch of kids and people here and like, here, look at my bum. I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I really am trying not to be super judgmental right now, but I'm, I'm judging these people really hard in my mind. Like I am, I'm like, you, oh. Joel, say something constructive, please. <laughs> Cause I'm I don't, getting mad. <laughs> I don't think I have anything really constructive to say. I just hope the guy learned his lesson and quit drinking. Mm -hmm. Like, Good point. I don't find mooning funny either. Ozzy Osbourne used to moon his audience, and I'm sure there's kids in that. Hmm. And like, you're probably so far away, you can't really see much. And Ozzy's a buffoon, right? He's just this drunken, drugged up dude. And um, I'm sure this guy was just, I don't know the circumstances. I'm assuming, I hope he's mooning his friends and not, <laughs> not being just a prick and just being what Wendy was saying, you know, I just hope there's some underlying circumstance when he did it that he just uh, learned his lesson, I hope. That's all. I don't think he learned his lesson, but we won't get into anything else that he's done. <laughs> oh, it's, oh, okay, he's that guy. <laughs> okay, we're throwing yeah. the book at him. That's yeah, throw the book at him. Done. Yep. Quite a lot of these people... They have done other things other than what we're mentioning, but mm. yeah, we're just going to stick to their Scooby crimes and yeah. The next one happened March 6th, 2016. Woman escapes officers in mystery machine van. A 51 year old woman in Redding, California, led police on a high speed chase in a 1994 Chrysler minivan painted like the mystery machine. According to news articles and the police, she was on supervised release for theft and suspected of violating her probation and deactivating her ankle monitor when a police officer spotted her in the mystery machine. When the officers tried to pull her over, she sped through major roads and highways in excess of 100 miles per hour before running a red light and almost crashing into four other vehicles, but she kept going. So... Some articles said she crashed into four vehicles and some said almost crashed. So I'm not exactly sure what happened, but we'll go with almost crashed. Multiple police cars and a California Highway Patrol helicopter were tracking her. However, she managed to abandon the mystery machine because it ran out of gas and fled the scene. She turned herself into the police on March 16th, 10 days later saying it was the right thing to do. She also asked the police for a visitor sign-in sheet, and she wrote that she was there to visit the mystery machine, which was impounded. She apparently owned the mystery machine, which was originally painted white, but she painted it like the mystery machine so she could disappear if law enforcement tried to contact her again. When the police asked her how her ankle monitor stopped working, she said the battery died on February 24th, so she took it off, drove over it two to three times with the mystery machine, and threw the pieces away along Highway 273. In September of 2016, she was sentenced to two years and eight months in prison. At the time of sentencing, she admitted she had a methamphetamine addiction. Once again, kids, don't do drugs. Uh, obviously tons of bad choices before this even happened with her. Um, if you needed any further proof that drugs impair your ability to be a sensible person and not stupid, 
how is the mystery machine going to make you hide from police? That is probably the most conspicuous vehicle that you could choose to drive around in. Um, just questioning, questioning the, the sanity and the, like given all of the thought that went into her BS story, I feel like she should have known better that maybe the mystery machine wasn't the best choice. Um, but yeah, Again, like guys, you will see a very common underlying theme here, and it is the drugs are bad. I am going to say this 10 bazillion times tonight because I have very strong feelings about this. Drugs are bad. Don't do them. I'm, I'm actually, I'm glad that she got two years in prison and eight, eight months. I'm so glad that they, they didn't just give her probation because like, lady, get your shit together. I know life is hard. Trust me. I know it's hard, but you can make good decisions. You do not have to give in to this BS that, oh, I'll just do drugs and hide in my mystery machine. Um, good luck. No, you won't. I, uh, I don't want to sound mean to this lady, but I couldn't stop laughing reading this article. I found it the most amusing. And... Just because, yeah, like when you said tons of bad decisions, I kind of admire the lady for painting her because I've wanted a mystery machine for a while. And despite being on meth methamphetamine or whatever she was on, she actually went through with it. So I mean, it's kind of impressive. Um, I'm just trying to find something good to say about her. I, if you saw her mugshot, she's looking, she does not look 51. And uh, not that I want to insult her looks, but uh, she's had a hard life, that's for sure. Uh, of drugs, her life of drugs. I don't know what else is behind her life. And I'm kind of impressed that she got away. Like, Mr. Machine so colorful and helicopter, and she still managed. That's kind of impressive, I guess. I'm just trying to say something nice about this lady. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I hope she turned out all right, but I don't think she has. I think if I was fleeing the police, a mystery machine would be the last thing I'd be driving to do that. I mean, yeah. you can spot the mystery machine from like 10 miles away. It's so bright. And it doesn't blend in with anything. So you're really going to stand out in that. Yeah. I mean, it does kind of go along, though. Like, I'm guys, I'm being, I'm being silly. But it does kind of go along with the cartoon that the mystery machine was always running out of gas. That's Even yeah. in real life, the damn thing runs out of gas. <laughs> you know, like Joel said, up until that point, she did somehow manage to successfully evade police, both on the road and in the air. So, damn mystery machine. Gotta make sure you fill that gas tank, I guess. <laughs> Definitely, if I'm going to go on a high-speed chase, I'm gonna make sure I have the gas to do it. I mean, yeah. You know, I look at some of these people and I I don't understand why they do the things they do. Like, I know some of these people have had a really, really hard life and have probably gone through things that I couldn't even imagine. But when they read about themselves, like, aren't they embarrassed by some of these things? Yeah, you hope so. Yeah, they should be. Yeah. Like, we're embarrassed for them, so I would hope that they would feel some measure of shame in what they've done, but who knows, because they continue to do the things. True. So I guess it can't be that bad for them. Yeah. Our next article is from May 13th, 2016. Stolen Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine Crashes Into House. Around 3 a.m., a stolen mystery machine crashed through a chain link fence and into the wooden stairs of a house in St. Paul, Minnesota. Two males were seen fleeing the scene. Officers identified the two males as teenage suspects who were unharmed in the crash. This is where the story, I think, got kind of cool. So the mystery machine was owned by Guy Freschetti who said that at the time he didn't know the mystery machine was missing. He said it's the third mystery machine that they owned and that when his son was like three or four years old, he asked him how he wanted him to paint the van and the son got a, 
a mystery machine in a Happy Meal and asked if they could paint the van like the mystery machine. So every van that they have had, they've just continued to paint it like the mystery machine, which is really cool. But some of the news article titles and other things were pretty funny. One of them was Scooby Smack, Villain Plows Mystery Machine into St. Paul Home. And then the use of Zoinks and Rut Row was pretty good. And one article noted, so the mystery continues, police have split up to look for clues. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just thought some of the wording that they used was just so funny. And we're not going to get into people's comments, but for a lot of these articles, there are posts about them on like Facebook, Twitter. You you should look them up and read the comments. They're funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah for this one my issue was they had a 911 caller that saw two teenage boys fleeing the scene and they had a police dog that tracked the two teenage boys that the 911 caller saw to what was it uh less than a block away but they couldn't arrest them because they didn't have any evidence that they were the ones that stole the van. And I'm like, are we living in 1850 where finger fingerprints are, are not like a thing? Like they drove the van. I doubt they were wearing gloves. Probably not a coincidence that it was two teenage boys there and less than a block away. There they are hiding in a garage. I mean, I feel like it wasn't theirs. Exactly. Like, I feel like the Scooby gang could have solved this <laughs> really quick. And I'm disappointed. Um, I'm disappointed that the police did not pursue this because this is another thing that I feel like needs to be addressed. And that is the idea that if children commit crimes, somehow the fact that their children like absolves them of something you know like we can't charge minors as adults for like mur things like murder and you know oh well they're just kids like you know everyone makes mistakes and I'm not even going to say that I understand where they're coming from with that because I really don't because I look at situations like this and I understand stealing a car is not like murdering someone, but the principle of if a child, a teenager, whatever is already capable of doing things that are illegal, that are criminal, that are dangerous, they crashed into a house people could have died. The fact that someone does that as a kid, to me, is a bigger deal and throws up a way bigger red flag than an adult doing it. If a kid murders somebody, how is that not setting off like every alarm bell that exists to like, maybe this kid is dangerous because they're not going to be a kid forever. And if they were capable of doing this now at 15, 16 years old, what are they going to be capable of when they're 25 or 30? You know what I mean? So I get it. It wasn't that big of a deal, but it only wasn't that big of a deal because nobody got hurt. And I feel like they're kind of doing even the kids a disservice by just dropping it because like I say come on if the cops had wanted to prosecute them there was a whole bunch of ways of collecting evidence to know it was them that stole the van and I think that they were just like oh they're just kids out for a joy ride like let's give them a pass and I don't I don't know I feel like there is a time and a place for that this wasn't it for me I'm disappointed that they just let it go and that there was like I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm like too harsh about it, but I was a kid once and I didn't do that stuff. So I kind of expect that other people are capable of making better choices than what they make. And just because you happen to be under the age of 21 or 18 shouldn't absolve you from, 
I don't know, learning a lesson that it's not okay to just do this. Um, I'm pretty sure the article even said that the van was damaged enough that they were pretty sure that they weren't going to be able to take it like on the, the trip that they had planned. I don't know if it was me, like I'd be pretty pissed that like nobody, nobody even got a slap on the wrist for doing this. You know, I'm not saying throw them in jail, but I don't know. I just feel like like we're way too lax on stuff that is going to lead to something bigger. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think that was a poor choice by the police because there's no way that there was no evidence to collect. I think they just chose not to collect it. I think the tough thing with kids is that if a kid is arrested for doing something, they go into a juvenile detention center. Well, now you're putting these kids that, okay, they they stole the mystery machine and took it for a joyride and they crashed it into a house with kids that have done way worse things that are now going to be a big influence on the kids that like did this one thing. They're not usually doing bad things, but you know, they had a stupid idea. So I feel like maybe juvenile detention isn't always the place for a kid to go because you don't want somebody who, you know, they did something stupid, they they regret it, they're really sorry for what they did in with all these kids that are like, we'll cut you, like, we don't care, you know, we'll, we'll murder anybody or we'll steal from anybody or here, let's do some drugs together and go do stupid things. So, yeah. So I see where you're coming from, but I kind of feel like you have to really determine that based on the kid and like, how do they feel, you know, how did these teenagers feel crashing the mystery machine? Were they upset about it? Were they just like, whatever? I mean, I'd run too if I was a teenager because I wouldn't want to get caught by somebody, you know, but Right. And I'm not saying that in every instance that it should be as harsh as like sending them to juvie, but I think that it would be totally appropriate to be like, hey, you do shit like this. Um, how about you go spend next weekend picking up trash on the side of the road? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's I feel like there's all kinds of different means of punishment that don't involve jail or anything like that. You know what I mean? just something that people because I feel like today especially and I feel like it's getting worse and worse people have been taught that there are no consequences now again the consequence should totally depend on the circumstance and the person don't agree with just like oh well you break the law here's your punishment and everybody's treated the same absolutely not like no way but you let people get off without any kind of consequence. I just feel like it sends the wrong message. So yeah, I would definitely, I don't think that they deserve to go to like juvenile detention, but I totally would have been like, yeah, you can go pick up trash at the park next week. You know? I don't think I have anything to add. You two both really summed it up. Well, if I was going to comment on one thing, I think the trip Wendy was talking about is this guy's driving the mystery machine in every state park, I think, which I thought was cool. Yeah. That'd be awesome to see if you're with your family, um, seeing this mystery machine drive in, like you're a kid, see this mystery machine drive in. That would be awesome. <laughs> That's all I have. Yeah, I think they had it set up like a camper. It said it had like a bathroom in it and everything. And yeah, so that they could visit all the state parks. That is pretty cool. And thanks to teenagers, they couldn't do it. Yeah. Think about that. <laughs> Our next article is from December 31st, 2016. 2016 was a really crazy year for Scooby crimes. I don't know. Suspect resembling Shaggy from Scooby-Doo arrested, accused of robbing man with autism. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, on New Year's Eve, police said a young man described as having high-functioning autism told them he was walking to the Goodwill store to buy some comics. 
he saw a man jump out of a doorway and demanded he give him his headphones. The young man said no, and the man told him he had a gun and threatened to kill him if he didn't give him money. The young man gave him $20, and the man left. When the police asked for a description of the man, the police said the victim stated several times that the suspect looked like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. The police knew exactly who the victim was talking about. The suspect was known by police because of his addiction to K2, a synthetic drug meant to mimic marijuana. The suspect was charged with one count of armed robbery. Yeah, this is the one where I have like a little rant. <laughs> and it does go along with what I said in the last in the last one, just the idea about consequences for things and also guys back to drugs this i cannot stress this enough how we are just regressing so hard i feel like in society when it comes to drug to drug use and addiction and things like that and just like totally downplaying something that is a major issue it is a real problem um what got me about this one was something that someone said that they had interviewed. So John Hyatt is the CEO of Impact, which I couldn't actually find what that stands for, but it's basically, uh, from what I understand, a call center in Milwaukee where they do like community outreach, social work, like helping people, helping people, whatever that means, uh, with addiction or like housing issues or things like that. Um, which is fine. I am not saying there's anything negative about that, but this, this was something that he said in the article. He said, there needs to be consequences for people, especially engaged in illegal activity, but we also know when a person is addicted, it's a health issue. It's a disease and the appropriate response to that is treatment. So they didn't expressly say this, but I'm pretty sure that what we're supposed to take from that is that like let's not be too hard on the guy he has an addiction he has a health issue i am so sick and tired of hearing this argument because once again i know that people go through all kinds of different things but we know for a fact that there are literally millions of people who have lived in this world who have gone through things that none of us could even imagine and they have not made these choices in their lives okay that is not an excuse things that have happened to you is not an excuse for this level of crappy behavior it's just not and i feel like today like for one thing people people are not gonna like this but you want treatment you want help for them guess what we used to have things like that where we didn't send them to jail but we tried to get them treatment they were called asylums nobody wants to use that word anymore it's such a dirty word but i'm like mm, i don't i'm not saying that everyone that was involved in things like that were good people i'm sure that in certain places bad things happened but the fact of the matter is those places were there for a reason. And now we live in a world where everyone's like, oh, well, we can't send anybody to jail and oh, well, asylums are evil. So we'll just let all of these mentally deranged people run around on the streets, um, get on Greyhound buses and cut people's heads off. True news story. Pretty sure it happened in Canada a couple of years ago. Um not acceptable guys this is not okay this is just it's not okay and this idea that like criminals have more rights now than innocent people this is a true story uh in 1994 the supreme court of canada ruled that extreme intoxication could be used as a legal defense meaning if you were drunk or stoned enough that you didn't know what you were doing wasn't your fault which i don't even have words to describe how ridiculous that is whoever was responsible for that on the supreme court shame on you but the very next year parliament 
decided that's that's maybe not a good thing. So they introduced section 33.1 to the criminal code, which would prevent the accused from using extreme intoxication as a defense for violent crime. That was in the 90s. All of a sudden, fast forward to 2022, and the Supreme Court of Canada up and decides out of the blue, you know what, section 33.1 is unconstitutional and goes against the Charter of Rights. Um, okay. So they're saying now that to hold a person criminally responsible for actions undertaken while intoxicated to the point of having no voluntary control of your actions. Um, yeah, they're, it's not their fault. And the Supreme Court overruled what the parliament had tried to fix before. And again, what prompted this? To once again decide that if you get drunk or you get stoned, it's not your fault what you do. If you get if you choose to drink and you get in the car and you murder somebody, it's not your fault because it's not like you you got in the car wanting to hurt somebody, you know? Now, thankfully, the government, in one of the only reasonable things they've done in the last couple of years, uh, immediately was like, no. So they introduced a bill to undo or at least circumvent what the Supreme Court had done, which great, I applaud that, thank you. But just the idea, like, can you even imagine, like, what kind of logic goes into this? Because, excuse me, did you not choose to drink or do the drugs? Why does the choice have to come after that? That was your choice. And I cannot believe that we live in a world where this is the narrative. If you do something, you, it's not your fault. Nothing's your fault. Nothing is anybody's fault, except we'll blame everybody else for everything, you know, but like nothing's ever my fault. I'm not responsible for what I do. It's BS, guys. It's BS. This is a big, big, big problem that is like infiltrating all aspects of life. And it might sound like I'm going off about, like, I mean, we're just talking about, you know, a guy that robbed another guy. Well, it's more than that. It just is, you know, and this defense of it's not your fault because you're mentally ill or it's not your fault because you got addicted to drugs. Guys, you can't fix an addict until he wants to be fixed. I feel like most people would have to admit that, that. People don't get clean until they want to get clean or you force an intervention and you detox them, in which case they may go right back to it. Who knows? Um, but keeping them out of jail because you think they have a mental problem is not, I do not support that in any way, shape or form. Do I support getting people that have mental health problems help? Yes. And there are tons of programs, at least in Canada for you to do that. If if you want to get clean and you live in Canada, there are plenty of programs all across the country where you can go and they will help you do that. If you choose not to do that and you want to keep living your life of crime and you want to keep being a menace to society, you'll notice in the article it also mentioned that multiple other shop owners talked about this same guy as being a nuisance. So clearly nobody's doing anything about this um this is not okay this is not okay he robbed the guy at gunpoint he only got away with 20 dollars, sure but that's not the point you stick a gun in somebody's face i mean there are consequences for things you know um there was a story i'm not sure if it happened in canada but i think it was down south years ago where People on the street watched someone robbing a store or a person. They caught him, threw him in their van and called the police and kept him in the van until the police arrived. I'm not even making this up. They charged the person that detained the criminal, charged them with kidnapping and holding someone against their will. 
this is the world we live in. And it's because we make these little, what we think are little concessions. And we think that it's coming from like a good place in our heart. Like, oh, well, you just, you just, you just need help. Sometimes the help that people need is a kick in the ass and a reminder that what you're doing is not okay. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, and you need to stop. And if you don't stop, we will stop you from doing these things. Whether that means we take you to jail and you sit in a cell without access to your drugs, or whether it's you go off and you get yourself killed on the street or you kill somebody else. But guys, like this needs, this, this needs to stop because this is a way bigger thing. It really is. Sorry, that's the end. That was, I needed that to come out, but. I'm sorry. Please, Joel, add something nice. <laughs> yeah. I, you said a lot of great stuff. I do have some arguments, but I'll save them for another time. <laughs> um, I just wanted to go on about, because it's where I live. There are programs. I live in Canada as well. Same province as Wendy. And there are programs where you can get rehabilitated. The city I live in, though, it's they're full. So if you want it three, four year waiting list, unfortunately. Um, where I'm living now, like it's gotten bad. The uh, the amount of addiction that's going on because costs in Canada have gone way up. And the parks, like last year, you could go to a splash pad, which is like a water park with your kids. You could go on a hike. We have like so many trails. They're jam packed with like tents, people who are homeless now. Just within one year it's it's getting bad and these people have tried to get help but they can't get it shelters are full so it's it's kind of bad where i am and i also want to say like we're going to talk about a news article later on about how a person had their weed shop open during the pandemic and got fined but in canada in ontario at least during the pandemic you couldn't go to a Walmart, but you could go to a weed shop that was provincially run. You could go buy, go buy alcohol that was provincially run, and you could buy groceries. Those were the only three things you could really go to. You couldn't even really go to the hospital. They just without a, a COVID test, but you go to these three places because they considered alcohol and weed essential. So I think the system is a bit messed. Uh, I don't. I'm just kind of riffing off Wendy. Um, she did say a lot of great things. Uh, I do want to say. Though I worked in an industry where there were a lot of alcoholics. I was a bartender. Restaurants, a lot of cooks and chefs become alcoholics and you couldn't fire them for being an alcoholic. You had to send them and pay for their rehab. And um, sometimes it didn't work, but when it did work, you're you're more than willing to pay for that. It was just a complete blessing and you, you change someone's lives forever and um, I'm grateful of that, I guess, that you just can't fire someone for being drunk. You have to get them help and they have to take that help. If they don't, then you can fire them. So I'm, I've am i seen people's lives changed and I'm, I'm grateful for that because I don't understand addiction. I've, I'm not, I don't really have an addictive personality other than Scooby-Doo masks and other things, but not to drugs or alcohol. So um, like it's, I want, I always want to put down people sometimes, but then I look at that person as someone's kid or that someone's parent. And like, I, I kind of change my mind. And if you get to know these people too, I'm sure you get to change your mind. So I don't want to be too judgmental, even though in reality, I'm, I'm not like flawless or whatever. I'm not on a soap box here. I'm rambling. I'm going to shut up. I, I do think, especially in the United States, like we've closed down all the mental hospitals. It is harder for people to get help here. Like Joel said, prices have gone up. There are more homeless people. It's sad. And I think our government needs to do something about it. Like they should be helping people. You shouldn't be making them homeless, making them addicted to drugs. It's there's got to be something that can be done. And if we can fix that, it would make a big difference in crime rates and just life in general. It's not even in the news. That's what shocks me the most. Like 
people are unaware of it unless you go to these cities and you see it firsthand and you gasp and you're like, why isn't something being done? But yeah. nothing is. Our next article is from December 26, 2018. Ohio police find kangaroo named Scooby Roo during traffic stop on Interstate 71. A Cincinnati area police officer pulled over a pickup truck with an enclosed trailer just after 1 a.m. for a marked lane violation on Interstate 71. The driver said there were two ostriches in the trailer, and then the officer noticed an animal in a pouch in the passenger seat, though some articles said that it was in the back seat. A young kangaroo peeked out from the pouch. The driver said the kangaroo's name was Scooby Roo. He was delivering the kangaroo and two ostriches to their new home in Columbus. Apparently, kangaroos and ostriches are not considered dangerous wild animals under Ohio law. The officer joked that the joey wasn't properly restrained and the driver was cautioned. The driver was initially pulled over because the officer couldn't see the registration tag but no violation was issued. Cutest name ever <laughs> for, for a kangaroo. I mean, props to whoever named him for sure. And I have no doubt that given the lack of restrictions that the thought passed your mind, should I move to Ohio so I can finally get a kangaroo? They are <laughs> legal in Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay. There's okay. just a bunch of restrictions and... I don't know. I can't actually leave it with anyone, so I would never be able to like leave the house. I can never go on vacation. So, you know, it, it's a huge commitment. I'm thinking maybe when I retire, which will hopefully be in the next few years, then I'll get the kangaroo. But... <laughs> yeah, it's a cute story, cute name. Um, could you go on vacation where kangaroos are legal? Like, have you mapped out? what states you could maybe visit i don't think you're even allowed to take it anywhere oh wow once you have it you can only have it like in your house can't you just say i'm taking it to a zoo <laughs> i don't know i haven't maybe this guy was far. <laughs> scooby -Roo. maybe this guy was in your position with scooby roo and he was just like yeah I'm taking it so <laughs> wouldn't explain the ostriches but <laughs> maybe anything is possible <laughs> I do want a kangaroo. They're so cute. And if I ever get one, I think Scooby Roo is going to be its name. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Our next article is from January 26, 2019. Scooby Dooby Doo. Stolen Golden Retriever Pup Leads Police to Crime Spree. Officials with the New York City Police Department were trying to figure out who had burglarized several homes in Brooklyn. Among the items that were stolen was a four-year-old dog named Scooby. Police said they got a tip about a possible suspect. When they went to the suspect's home and knocked on the door, an excited pup came to greet them. They realized it was the stolen golden retriever named Scooby. While searching the suspect's home, police also found several stolen and illegal items, including credit cards, green cards, narcotic pills, jewelry, a machete, and a sword. And along with Scooby, they found his personalized leash. The NYPD wrote on Facebook, don't worry, Scooby is back with the Mystery Inc. gang and the burglar is in custody. I'm glad it had a happy ending and I'm glad that the dog went home, but... I just can't with golden retrievers, guys. I can't. <laughs> Goosebumps ruined it for me. I'd have left him there. I'd been like, good, take him. Oh, he's cute. <laughs> Debatable. <laughs> he didn't have red eyes. I mean, come on. He was cute. Not, not at that moment. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I thought that dog was pretty cute, too. I've got nothing against golden retrievers. There was nothing wrong with him. He was cute. Yeah. And he was excited to see the police. So if he was evil, I don't think he would have been excited to see them. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe maybe all of the those knives and stuff belong to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can't trust them. I'm telling you. Not safe. 
We can't blame a golden retriever named Scooby for burglary. It just seems wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Our next article is from April 3rd, 2020. Shaggy arrested in Colorado after refusing to close smoke shop. An owner of a smoke shop in Fort Collins, Colorado, refused to close down his two locations during the pandemic, and a judge ordered them to close immediately and authorized law enforcement to use force if necessary. The police served the order to both locations and the employees were compliant and cooperative. The owner was told over the phone about the closure and he showed up at one of the locations and refused to obey orders from law enforcement officers to not enter the store. He was arrested and booked in a county jail on suspicion of unlawful acts under public health law, obstructing government operations and resist resisting arrest. A temporary restraining order was issued against the shop owner and the shop ordering the stores to be closed. A notice was posted on the doors, but the owner tore it down and continued to operate anyway. But the owner did finally announce on their Facebook page that they were temporarily closed on April 10th. Yeah, so definitely, sorry, don't support any business that thumbed their nose at the public health restrictions. Like, I get it. I understand, but don't support it. But this is just another place where I really wish that we could, like, stop associating Scooby with this drug crap. I don't care what the guy looks like. Like, can we please, as Scooby fans, normalize telling people, like, don't call him Shaggy. Don't make any kind of association between Scooby and that lifestyle. It really, really bothers me that that is a thing. And I think it's very, very wrong and very detrimental. Like, I, you will never catch me. I don't care if, if the guy's legal name is Shaggy. I will find something else to call him. Like, I just feel like we really need to, like, not encourage any kind of association between Scooby, anything to do with Scooby, anything to do with kids or anything that's wholesome at all and, and that stuff or anything bad anything bad let's just like we got to get them apart no more of this like intermingling them because like it's it's getting really tiresome for one thing because like I really feel like there is plenty of evidence from people that like not that we should need it but from people that worked on Scooby that are like that's BS they weren't they weren't stoned they weren't doing drugs in the mystery machine like can we stop fighting the facts for one thing like it's ridiculous, but yeah, like let's let's just not and even entertain that. Any kind of like, even if it's just a name, no more association with Scooby and that stuff ever. I hundred percent agree. I don't think we're ever going to get that though. Probably not. Yeah. But he did kind of look mean, like Shaggy. I mean, he had on the, the green shirt that Shaggy... Oh, he was trying. Made. He was totally trying for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say he was definitely trying to look like Shaggy. Yeah. <laughs> on February 16th, 2021, a man dressed as Scooby-Doo filmed running from police after car seized. In the UK, a man dressed as Scooby-Doo fled from officers with his tail literally between his legs after the car he was in was seized by police. Body cam footage shows the man in a Scooby onesie aggressively approaching cops after his pal, who they dubbed Shaggy, was pulled over in Derby for performing wheel spins. Shaggy was found to be intoxicated, uninsured, and had no driver's license. So he was arrested at the scene and the man dressed as Scooby had to find his own way home. I'm assuming wheel spins are like donuts. Yeah. Yeah, burnouts or something, I'm guessing. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Um I kind of wish they'd have like elaborated, like, why was he wearing the Scooby suit to begin with? Like, you just randomly put on a Scooby suit to, like, go out in the car joyriding with your friend that doesn't have a license? It's weird. 
it's a little weird. I kind of would like to know a little, like, do I, do I actually want to know? Maybe not, but I kind of wish that they'd have like expanded on like, why, why was he doing that? Because I noticed that like, did it, it didn't say that he was intoxicated. Um, just, just weird that you choose to like, just I'm going out to do something stupid. Let me dress up like Scooby. It's, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. And while I can appreciate, or at least I understand why it's funny to like, ho ho, the guy's dressed like Scooby. Let's call the guy that was driving Shaggy and talk about it like that. Again, just to reiterate the point, like, guys, don't do that. I know that it makes for like fun wordplay and stuff, but let's just not perpetuate that. You know, let's not encourage it. So, yeah. Yeah. But what, like, buddy, what were you doing in the Scooby suit? I don't know. I could see myself going out in a scooby suit. <laughs> Maybe through a drive through I wouldn't go and hop in a car with someone. But, you know, if when I had roommates and one of them's like, hey, want to hit McDonald's and I'm already wearing the Scooby suit, I'm not going to change. Okay, what were you doing that you were already in the Scooby suit, Joel? Well, I don't own one, but... But? If it's, it's a onesie, so I'm assuming it's one of those like things that keep you warm in the winter. Oh, okay. A slanket or whatever. I'm, I'm thinking if it's comfortable and you're, you're just sitting around watching TV, he's like, hey, want to go get food? Yeah. I'd probably go, but my roommates all have licenses. But... So that would be a good video series for you to do. Wear a Scooby Doo onesie, have oh a friend God. in the passenger seat videotaping and you just go through the drive throughs and then like, you can tape the people's reaction to you being <laughs> QV suit I I'd think that's it. a great idea I would watch that for sure <laughs> <laughs> I'll consider it <laughs> at this time I do not own a Scooby suit though they're expensive they are yeah yeah you should wear one of those masks through the drive-thru. Yeah. You can get somebody to scream. I need someone to drive, though, because I think it would be illegal to mm. drive. It's got anyone. holes. It's got sort of holes. I mean, can you, have you put one on? Can you see through it at all? Yeah, some of them you can't see too great. but um, And some are really small, but my head's small, so it works. But um, Joel will be the next headline. Man in Scooby Doo yeah. villain mask crashes through the drive through of Wendy's. <laughs> yeah. Make sure it's a Wendy's. Okay. <laughs> That's the only requirement now. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be a Wendy's. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> All right. This is good. Coming up with ideas while we're talking about criminals. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> On October 26, 2021, a kangaroo named Scooby-Doo was stolen from a Kentucky farm. A 10-month-old baby kangaroo named Scooby-Doo was stolen from Hillview Stables in London, Kentucky. The farm owner, Rick Gregory, said the baby kangaroo needed powdered milk for kangaroos and wallabies, and without it, he could die. Hillview Stables offered a $500 reward for the safe return of the kangaroo or $1,000 for his safe return and information that led to the arrest of the person or persons who took the kangaroo. Unfortunately, as of now, the kangaroo has still not been returned. Yeah. I mean, it's not because he's in your backyard or anything. I was just going to say, I didn't steal him. I was in Kentucky in 2018, not 2021. It was <laughs> not me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. In all seriousness, though, like, that that was really sad because they did mention, too, that, like, there was there was a chance that it would die without proper care. And I really doubt that anybody that would steal a baby kangaroo is equipped to look after it, you know? Um, so that is, that is a really, that is a really sad story, especially since I, that was the one that I also tried to find some kind of update and yeah, it doesn't, doesn't look like they ever found him. So, I mean, I hope that somehow he survived and someone is just enjoying their pet kangaroo named Scooby-Doo. I, I hope so. 
um but yeah like not not cool guys like don't don't steal people's animals uh especially like there's never an excuse for doing it but like especially if it's something like that that needs special care because like that's just cruel to to take it and it's just gonna die because it'll probably die a really awful death and uh yeah that that was a that was a sad one yeah that is a sad one and i hope the kangaroo turned out to be all right when i and... read about it i wanted to do a, like a search party for the kangaroo but mm. like i you wouldn't know where to start like where do you start looking yeah i had the opportunity to steal a zebra when i was younger <laughs> <laughs> we were we were driving down the road and it was a country road and i guess the local zebra escaped from the, a nearby zoo and we took it to a barn and i can't say that it didn't cross my mind not to return it but very next morning we called up the zoo and you know told them hey we have your zebra and they were very happy happy and grateful and they didn't even realize it was gone at the time they would have figured it out that's how early we called you know we're like hey you know we couldn't sleep we just but i really wanted that zebra i would have hung out with that zebra all night i'd have been like we are gonna be pals i'm we're gonna get to know each other and yeah maybe i'll return you in the morning <laughs> do the right thing kids do the right thing right always do the right thing but for those few hours that you're hanging out with it like make yeah. the most of it yeah right yeah, yeah, exactly. Agreed. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> oh, Joel, you always have the best stories. <laughs> <laughs> the next article is from March 15th, 2022. Shaggy arrested for attempted murder after drug deal gone bad. In Pensacola, Florida, officers were called for a possible shooting. Officers said they found the victim sitting at a bus stop with a gunshot wound to his forearm. Witnesses said the suspect, also known as Shaggy, was the shooter. The suspect was homeless. He shot the man after the pair got into an argument. According to the arrest report, the suspect fled the scene along the railroad tracks and began taking his clothes off. Officers said the victim wouldn't provide a statement to police or allow them to look at his gunshot wound. On March 24th, officers talked with the victim again, who said he was extremely intoxicated and couldn't remember the details of the events leading up to the shooting. After giving police a false story about buying a phone charger from a friend, he finally told police he was shot after a gun sale involving the suspect and another fell through. The victim changed his story, revealing that he and the suspect and three others went to a house where the suspect attempted to sell his pistol to someone inside of the residence in exchange for spice, a synthetic cannabinoid. There was a disagreement about the amount of drugs that could be exchanged for the gun. The sale fell through after the discussion of how expensive the gun's ammunition was and how it was not worth the purchase. The victim said the suspect pulled out a knife while the group walked back to their tent. The suspect shot the victim after the two got into an argument. The suspect was charged with attempted homicide and carrying an unlicensed concealed weapon. Kate, okay, let's just be clear. There are no victims in this story. I don't care what anybody says. And everyone should have gone to jail. I don't know exactly what happened, but... Guys, like, nothing good comes from drugs. Literally nothing. Don't do them. Don't sell them. Don't take them. I don't care what is going on. Kids, say no to drugs. I agree. We don't want to be uh, discussing you in a future episode <laughs> about your newspaper article. I'm assuming most people watching us probably aren't doing drugs, though. I hope not. And if they are, hopefully they're not doing crazy things like these people. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Only do crazy things sober. <laughs> That's right. <funny. laughs> 
this uh, this one reminded me of like something out of law and order where everybody lies and they eventually figure out what happened but even the victims are lying and it's right. like does stuff like that really happen well yeah apparently, apparently it does <laughs> may 1st 2022 drunken main man arrested after trying to hide from police under blanket is this an episode of scooby-doo Officers responded to a disturbance caused by a drunken man at the Admiral Ocean Inn in Belfast, Maine. Police removed the suspect from the property, and he was told not to return or he would be arrested. At 12.40 p.m., the police did a sweep of the parking lot and found someone hiding in a chair with a blanket draped over themselves. When they pulled the blanket off, they found the suspect hiding under it. He was arrested for criminal trespass and violation of bail conditions. It was a pretty funny, a pretty funny utterance, you know, like, is this an episode of Scooby-Doo? Because like, yeah, people hide under the most ridiculous things. You know, let me contort my body into the shape of a lamp. And you can't see me, you know, um, man, people really need to get a, like a life or a hobby that's i don't know what else to say like guys come on there's got to be better stuff for you to do than get intoxicated and and go do the things that you're doing like please find a hobby like maybe take up watching scooby you know you want something to do on a friday night get in your scooby onesie and watch Scooby-Doo for a few hours. Like, why not? It would be way better for you. And way better for the police. And way better for everybody else. Like, oh my gosh, guys, come on. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Watching Scooby might be a bad idea. Because I think Mr. Hyde. Wherever he is, there he is. <laughs> he hid under a blanket. In the back of the That's mystery true. machine. That's and it worked. True. So maybe yeah. this guy was inspired. <laughs> maybe. It's definitely something out of Scooby-Doo. And just reading that a grown man is hiding underneath a blanket. I mean, at the time, he was like 40-some years old. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not blaming Scooby-Doo for this because, <laughs> you know, Scooby-Doo has taught us some valuable life lessons and would never teach us bad things. Yep. <laughs> I'm assuming the guy just wanted to go to sleep and I believe he was homeless. So it's possible that he just needed somewhere to be able to like sit and I don't know what he was doing there before. They didn't say in the article what disturbance he was causing, but who knows? Who knows? August 25th, 2022. Operation Scooby-Doo, a success as Georgia County rallies to save hundreds of dogs. In Heard County, Georgia, Wendy Brewer, the owner of Dogs Rock Rescue, was arrested and charged after the police executed a search warrant and found evidence of animal cruelty and abuse. Then starting on August 29th, 2022 at 8 a.m., the Heard County Animal Control and Heard County EMA began the recovery phase of this disaster. This phase was known as Operation Scooby-Doo. The reason for this operational name was because everyone loves Scooby-Doo, which is true, and he helps all dogs. They asked for monetary donations, as well as cleaning supplies, dog food, trash cans and trash bags, leashes and other pet supplies, and for people to volunteer to take in a dog. Within just a few days, they raised over 4,000 pounds of dog food, 200 plus collars and leashes, over a ton of cleaning supplies and much more, and they placed 30 plus dogs in homes. Yeah, what they said made me think of decoy for a dog napper. <laughs> and when Scooby finds Daphne, the first thing he asks is like, and the dogs? And she's like, oh yeah, we'll free the dogs. Like he was like immediately on that. Like, yeah, Scooby does care for all the dogs. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not, not pleased that that woman 
was using my name for one <laughs> thing does not deserve that name so we're gonna call her something else anything else other than that um but yeah that's another feel good story that's nice that they all came together and dogs got homes and and this is one let's associate scooby with this type of thing that's totally appropriate you know no more negative criminal drug stuff this is the kind of stuff that we could totally associate with scooby and the gang because yeah it's very heartwarming and totally embodies what scooby stands for helping helping other people when they need help and uh looking out for the little guys so yeah bravo to them yeah scooby does care for all the dogs even the golden retrievers we have no evidence of that i'm just saying <laughs> the golden retriever awards <laughs> that's just a name i didn't see a golden retriever there and the statue was a gold so i mean like was it a retriever was it a different kind of retriever there's a reason they made amber a golden retriever and mm. then she broke and then she broke scooby's heart mm. i'll die on this hill guys i'm telling you <laughs> do not do not bring a golden retriever to my funeral or you will be calling scooby and sam and dean to send my ghost back to the grave <laughs> oh gosh i'm gonna bring you a puppy golden retriever we're gonna oh, name geez. him scrappy and you're gonna love him yeah. <laughs> how would you be able to resist if his name was scrappy do you wouldn't i because you'd have to say bad him. things about scrappy and you're not gonna do that I would be like, oh, his name is Crappy Doo? Crappy? Yeah, Crappy's right. I'm going <laughs> to film it and then I'm going to prove to everyone that Wendy doesn't like Scrappy as much as she says she does. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we have one more article to cover and this was a nice one, sort of. Something nice came out of something stupid so february 3rd 2023 local deputies thank scooby-doo and blue for tracking skills that lead to arrests yes i thought of my dog blue when they mentioned blue it's not my dog but it'd be cool <laughs> if it was in west plains missouri police tried to conduct a traffic stop but the suspect sped off while the police car was turning around to stop him the suspect abandoned his vehicle at a nearby house and fled on foot. The deputies searched the area and only found shoe impressions in the snow that disappeared into the woods. The following day, deputies returned to the area and found similar shoe impressions in the snow on a nearby dirt road that led back to the suspect's residence five miles away. The suspect was arrested without incident. He was booked at the jail for driving with a revoked license, possession of a firearm, and felony fleeing. The sheriff's Facebook page noted that both deputies wanted to give credit to Blue's Clues and Scooby-Doo for the development of their tracking abilities. See, guys, we've been saying it all along. Life lessons for Scooby-Doo. You can learn something. There's your proof. That's perfect. Uh, and the fact that it was the Ozark County Sheriff's Office, I hope that Ma and Pa Hatfield invited them for supper after this. You know, I hope so. Go watch that episode. It's a good one. <laughs> I can't top that comment, Wendy, so. <laughs> Great episode, though. A lot of people don't like, seem to like it, though. I think they're nuts. I think they're nuts, too. Agreed. I think it's really cool that the sheriff's office gave a shout out to Scooby-Doo and Blue from Blue's Clues. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, how many police officers would be willing, first of all, to even thank a cartoon character? And even if it was just in like a fun, joking way, like, I just think it's really cool. You know, mm -hmm. they took this situation and they took it, they handled the situation and then they kind of, you know, brought, de-escalated it, we'll say by using that comment but I just thought that was great that was awesome yeah definitely any final thoughts on 
all of the interesting crimes that we discussed that involve Scooby-Doo? No more drugs. No more drugs, people. This is, You don't want to be on the next Scooby panel where we're <laughs> talking about you like this. Like, just make, please, guys, make good choices. Go watch Scooby-Doo instead of doing this stuff. Like, you got to stop <laughs> because this is ridiculous. And please normalize associating Scooby with good things, like knowing how to track people. And not with the negative drug stuff, okay? Let's collectively be like, we're done with that. Scooby has nothing to do with it. I, Scooby panel has spoken. No one can argue this point. If anyone tries to argue this point, Scrappy-Doo will be paying you a visit. And his eyes will glow like the golden retriever in Goosebumps. And I promise you will not like it. I think Wendy summed it up perfectly. <laughs> I really think Wendy needs a golden retriever named Scrappy. Oh, geez. I really think so. Now more so than ever. Yeah. Maybe someday. People don't do <laughs> drugs. Don't drink alcohol. Don't go like committing crimes in the name of Scooby-Doo. Like leave Scooby out of it at least. You don't have to dress like Shaggy and yeah like just stop committing crimes find something else to do there's a million things that you could be doing other than illegal things yeah all right we are going to wrap things up before we do let everyone know where they can find you on social media wendy you can find me on instagram i'm at wendy bridge uh twitter or x as they now want to call it like that's a topic for another day on a different kind of panel uh, Wendy Loves Jesus, and my blog is wendylovesjesus.wordpress.com. Joe? You will not find me on X or Threads, but you'll find me on YouTube under Plant Scooby. <laughs> and you can find all my links on scoobyaddicts.com. Thank you for joining us for another Scooby panel. Thank you for tuning in to another Scooby panel. I'm Nikki Blake from scoobyaddicts.com. If you like these panels, please subscribe to my channel for more great discussions. A huge shout out to our patrons, Julie Rosen, Ross from ScoobyFan.net, Scooby-Doo of Roblox, Tage, and Louisa Martin. If you would like to support the Scooby panel, please go to patreon.com slash scoobyaddicts. A very special thank you to artist, blogger, and Scooby collector Wendy Bridge and Joel from Planet Scooby. Scooby panel is available in podcast form on most podcast platforms or as a web series on YouTube. You can find Scooby Panel on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as at Scooby Panel. Scooby and Shaggy were voiced by Scott Ennis. Check out Scott's website, onescottshop.com. Scooby Addicts artwork by Will Davenport. Video editing by Nikki Blake. Music composed and performed by Bovine Nightmares. Please join us next time for another Scooby Panel.